When starting a nutrition conversation, it's important to have an agenda and make sure that everyone is on the same wavelength. The first step is setting an agenda. Setting the agenda is important, especially during a well-pet exam, because there's never enough time and there are so many important things to talk about. One way to introduce a brief nutrition topic is to ask, I see your pet is here for a different reason, but can we also talk about nutrition today? This is especially important if the pet has gained or lost an unhealthy amount of weight. Setting an agenda is a way of creating and meeting expectations, both for the client and for the team member. Setting and sticking to an agenda demonstrates respect for you and your client's limited time and helps you stay focused on expectations and priorities for the appointment. The nutrition conversation should start with taking the pet's diet history in an empathic and non-judgmental way. This can be done relatively quickly if the client has done pre-work prior to the appointment. By paying attention to our verbal and non-verbal cues, we can and should avoid communicating judgmental opinions. Our goal is to build a quality, trusting relationship between the veterinary team and the client. When your team has asked clients to complete and share their diet history form prior to the appointment, you can review and quickly identify areas for further questioning. The classic example is with an overweight pet and clients who are worried that they're going to be judged. Many of us have heard clients say, you're gonna yell at me about this, but I fed my dog too many treats. In these situations, it's vital that we help the client understand they're in a judgment-free space. I will directly convey to my clients that it's judgment-free, and the more accurate information they can provide, the better and quicker I'll be able to help their pet. So the message to convey is that we're working together with the pet's health as our top priority. Many new veterinary graduates come from training programs where communication skills were emphasized. One of these key skills is asking open-ended questions that begin with what or tell me about. This approach allows clients to tell their story in their own words. Equally important are what I call clarifying questions that include when and why. In order to better understand the timeline of events in a pet's illness, we need to know when a physical symptom began or when a new food was introduced and the usual food was stopped. This is where the when question comes in handy. And in order to better understand a client's behavior or decision-making process, I will sometimes ask a why question, such as, I'm curious to hear why you selected that diet. Using these clarifying questions often helps me appreciate the client's motivation for making a change or even their resistance to change. Reflective listening is another communication skill that everyone on the healthcare team should develop. Once a client tells their story, we can reflect back what was heard, and by doing so, we send the message that the client was seen and heard as an individual, and that they're valued for the care they give to their pet. It's important to keep in mind that we don't have to repeat everything a client says. We don't want to go overboard. But when they've relayed a lot of information, it's helpful to succinctly summarize what you believe to be the key points. If the client needs or wants to correct your understanding, they can do so. Another communication skill that is useful when you need to share technical information is the technique called the chunk and check method. This simply refers to dividing up the information into discrete messages or chunks and taking purposeful pauses to check in and ask the client if they understand or if something wasn't clear or if they have any questions about what was just said. Our experiences with clients and watching their facial cues can help guide us as to where or when to pause. A valuable exercise to practice with your healthcare team is to review those commonly asked nutrition topics when clients have the greatest confusion and practice your responses with the chunk and check method. It is very important to summarize each nutrition conversation because clients tend to remember the last thing that was said. 
So this is your opportunity to highlight or restate positive points about their care and devotion of their pet and emphasize or restate what was agreed on for next steps. This is also the opportunity to clearly convey what you want for the pet in the short term and long term. For example, here's what I might say when summarizing a nutrition conversation. Okay, Mr. Wells, let me finish by saying that I'm really glad we were able to talk through your questions about Fluffy's diet today. I can see and hear how much you care about her and we're committed to helping you help her achieve her best life. For the next five to 10 days, let's keep Fluffy on the same food you've been feeding. You should monitor her appetite, energy level, and her ball movements. You can also do some research and share with us at least three or four products you're thinking of switching to. I'll work with Sue, our licensed technician, who's our nutrition champion, and we'll evaluate your choices to see how they compare to Fluffy's current diet. I'll note in the record that Sue will follow up with you in 10 days. How does that sound? This type of nutritional summary helps make sure everyone is aligned on the next steps going forward and identifies any outstanding questions.